Hi guys, welcome to part two of my glute science series. If you haven't seen part one, I highly recommend you pause this video now and go watch it. It will get you up to speed on the glute science fundamentals that will help you follow along and get the most out of this video. Today, I'm going to walk you through a well-structured glute workout. Through this workout, I'm going to show you how to choose effective glute building exercises, how to modify exercises to better target the glutes, and give you tips and cues on how to best activate the glutes during the exercises. Okay, so for an effective glute workout, I suggest starting with one to two heavier compound exercises. Compound exercises are best done before your muscles are all fatigued, so I suggest leaving the lighter accessory and isolation work for later in the workout. Compound exercises can be loaded more heavily, more safely, so they're great for lower rep ranges and strength work. In contrast, accessory and isolation exercises are usually done with lighter loads and higher reps. More repetitions means more practice calling on your target muscle, which helps teach you better mind-to-muscle connection. I like to to include two to four accessory exercises, sometimes in the form of supersets at the end of my workout. You might be wondering, what are cues? Verbal coaching cues are signal words or phrases that encourage athletes to improve their movement patterns or activate specific muscles during exercises. Cues actually do help, and I will show you the science. Cueing the glutes during prone hip extension actually doubles the glute recruitment while at the same time decreasing the hamstring recruitment. As well, cueing the glutes during prone hip extension also helps turn the glutes on more quickly and it delays the turning on of the hamstrings. In addition, Hallman et al. showed that cues intended to increase gluteus maximus activation, increase gluteus maximus activation. All right, so it's finally time to get into the meat of the video. I'm going to now walk you guys through the actual workout. So the first exercise I did on this day was the Smith machine squat. I use a Smith machine squat to replace a barbell squat. Unlike the barbell squat, the Smith machine squat allows for stable forward torso lean, which increases hip range of motion while decreasing knee range of motion. If you don't get this, watch my previous video. Lee et al showed that 30 degree forward trunk lean increase gluteus maximus activation and decrease quad activation. Some cues for this exercise, take a wide stance, turn your feet and your knees out, push through the outside heels of your feet. Pushing through the outside of your feet is a way of inducing static abduction and external rotation. It's really important to be contracting your glutes from the very bottom of the squat. You need to be patient, even if you need to sit there for a second to allow your glutes to turn on and then have a slow ascent. Honestly, one of the trickiest things for me when I started training is actually learning how to contract my glutes and activate them when they're in a stretched position. Okay, so moving on to the second exercise, I did the kettlebell Romanian deadlift with a glute emphasis. Of course, this can be done with a barbell or a dumbbell, but I've just been loving the kettlebell recently. So I want you to take a shoulder width stance, your feet slightly turned out, push through the outside heels of your feet. This is going to be a theme. Sit your hips back, allowing your knees to bend, hinge around your hips. The glutes should be contracting to resist the descent. On the way up, allow the kettlebell to stay ahead of you, meaning that you don't want it tucked right into your body. You want to actually almost like lean forward into the weight. And then you're going to use your glutes to propel your hips forward. So treat it like a standing hip thrust. Squeeze the glutes to straighten out your hips, fully lock out at the top, and squeeze that peach ugly butt style. Moving on to the third exercise of this workout, here I did a barbell step up slash lunge. So you can still see that we're on number three of a compound movement here. However, this exercise, because of the nature of it, I'm doing a lighter to medium weight. So this is when I'm starting to basically decrease the weight and move into more accessory movement. This exercise is great because it has a big range of motion and it is also unilateral. I like to include at least one unilateral glute exercise Exercise. This helps to avoid left to right imbalances in strength or in size. Unilateral exercises also help activate the glute medius because it needs to work to keep the hips abducted to resist knees caving in. So it's 
working really hard to keep you upright and balanced. I suggest trying them both but on different days and just sticking to one and don't alternate. If you're doing the step up, I suggest having the bench at around knee height. Take a long stride or step, keeping your torso bent forward and your hips back and pushing through your heel to move your body up and forward. You need to mindfully contract your glutes before you even start to step up. If you're having a really hard time doing this, I definitely suggest going lighter if you need to. With the glutes, it's about actually teaching them how to turn on. Otherwise, if you're quad dominant, your quads might take over. Sometimes less is more in the process of learning how to activate your glutes. The fourth exercise, I am doing a barbell hip thrust. I personally think that no glute program is complete without some sort of hip thrust. I spoke about the benefits of the hip thrust in my last video, but the main selling point is that the tension on the glutes is always strongest at full hip extension, and the barbell hip thrust is a very biomechanically advantageous way of loading the hip. With the hip thrust, it's super, super important to get your setup done correctly and to practice it so that you can replicate it every single time. You want the edge of the bench to be resting just below your shoulder blades. Squeeze your shoulder blades up, back, and down. So take a wider than shoulder width stance with your toes turned out. When your hips are fully locked out at the top, your knees should make around a 90 degree angle. Obviously, it's easier to be able to see this if you record yourself or if you set up such that you have a mirror to one side of your body. Really, really focus on externally rotating. So keeping that weight on the outside of your heel of your foot, actively push and rotate your knees outwards. Honestly, focusing on this external rotation was a game changer for my hip thrust. Once you're all set up, it's as easy as just squeezing your glutes and thrust. Hold the lock out and squeeze them cheeks as hard as you can. On the way down, I want you to use your glutes to control the lowering of the bar. Always, always keep those glutes working. The fifth exercise of this workout is a superset. So we're supersetting cable squat and a cable glute kickback. I like to use the cable squat to mimic a hip thrust movement. Because of the line of pull of the cable, they do a really great job to simulate that perpendicular loading that you get with the hip thrust. To get the most of this exercise, I suggest setting the cable at the third lowest notch so it's a little bit higher off the ground that you might normally have put it. Feet shoulder width apart and point your toes out and then simply treat the rest the same as you would a hip thrust. So posterior pelvic tilt from the bottom and thrusting your body and your hips up and towards the machine. Keeping your torso and shoulders leaned into the cable but your hips back. And don't forget, squeeze the peach completely at the top. So for the second exercise of the super set, meaning that you complete one full set of the cable squat and then you go directly into cable glute kickback, set the cable at the second lowest notch so it's not completely at the bottom, it's a little bit raised. I found this to be key to making my glute kickback a little more comfortable and to help engage the glutes. Then you wanna step two feet away from the machine, lean forward so that you're around parallel to the floor. You're using the machine to kind of hold you in that position. So your standing leg is loose, your knee is slightly bent, weight is going to be on the toes of your feet. I lift up my heel and that really helps so that you can focus on the one actually working. With the glute kickback, you want to tuck your knee into your body at the starting position and start contracting your glutes before actually initiating the movement. So it's the same thing with the other exercises I mentioned. Step two, abduct your hip and externally rotate. I actually read this after I already modified my glute kickback based on my own experience, but Kang et al showed in their 2013 study that 30 degree hip abduction was better for activating the glute maximus than no hip abduction during prone hip extension with knee flexion. The glute kickback is a form of prone hip extension with knee flexion. Yay, science. Then you're going to kick a box along the floor. That's how I like to think about the first half of the kickback. Once you've kicked your box back along the floor, you're gonna kick 
up and out and away from your body, extending the knee. Basically, you're trying to kick as far away from your body as possible while really just working on squeezing your glute throughout and squeezing really hard at the top. This style of workout is what I have been doing for a couple of years now. It's given me really great glute progress and glute gains. I have a science-based workout program, which I mentioned in my last video. A lot of you guys have purchased it already, so thank you so much. If you want a program, like a full body program that uses all of the science that I mentioned in this video and my last video, then you can feel free to check it out. Um, the link is down below. All right, guys, so that's it for this video. If you found it informative and if you learned something, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you haven't, then click the little bell button because that helps notify you of my videos because apparently... Oh, and don't forget to leave me with a comment. I love hearing your guys' feedback. Honestly, my favorite comments ever are when you guys say that it helps you study. I know what it's like to be a student and I've learned so much through watching YouTube videos on science and stuff like that. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for supporting me. You guys are the best. Thank you. That's all I have for you guys. Bye.